Now that it's here and it's underway, um, it's absolutely amazing. I can't even describe in words how great the feeling is. There's been an increase in tennis and netball and the league and rugby's going well this season. There's been more participation, I would like to say, um, through all the codes. Our membership definitely has risen. A lot of new residents are joining us because they want to become involved in community activities that gives them pleasure. So here at Memorial Park in Dargaville, I suppose it's a classic case of uh, small town New Zealand um, having built a whole lot of facilities in the, probably the 40s, 50s and 60s. It's probably three or four um, different club rooms around the park, dotted around the park, all ageing, all needing to be maintained um, and really needing a solution around facilities, fit for purpose facilities going forward. Since we've been established, which is, this is our 14th year, we've been at the mercy of every club in town to use their facilities. So to use their hosting facilities, to use the changing room facilities, kitchen facilities, everything. And it has been quite scary some years not knowing whether we'd be able to secure those facilities. We didn't have any facility. We were using grass um, and we used different parts around the place and we couldn't play in the winter because the surfaces were just far too wet so we only had a part season to play in. It started really back in uh, 2011 when Council came to Sport Northland to ask us our opinion on whether netball um, and, and uh, tennis should be at Selwyn Park or Memorial Park. I guess back in, 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 at that time, um, Sport Northland didn't have any hard evidence of um, where that facility should be. So we recommended to council that really they should do a town plan on sports facilities so that um, that could tell them where that facility should be based. The old ASB Trust, which is now Foundation North, they, they gave us 20,000 20, for the facility study. Uh, Pub Charity gave 18,000 for a feasibility study. So that process is so important that we got the facility study done, we got the feasibility study. Kuiper District Council at the time was under central government commission and so there were no local councillors, there were four commissioners that had been appointed that were from outside the district. Uh, and so we had a, a situation where um, there was, I suppose, not a not a huge understanding of local needs. Commissioners had a focus on getting rid of debt and it was a real battle, a real battle. They, I think commissioners would have been very happy if we just disappeared and went away. Um, however, they did um, give us 100,000 seed funding, which is a very small amount for what we needed, which turned it into just under three million. Uh, but I think, um, so, without a doubt, since the gone back to elected trust, uh, elected councillors, um, it's been very supportive. From the outset, Sport Northland was pretty adamant that there needed to be local people on the board um, that was uh, overseeing this project. We ensured that that, that took place um, by uh, being involved in the appointments panel that appointed um, the five appointed members uh, and was overseeing the two elected members. You do not want representatives of all your stakeholders because they become single issue. You, you, our, the fact that we've got two elected people from the stakeholders, they have to look after all the sports and the other, the other five people are, are appointed for their skill set. You have to know where to go to get the money, you have to know how to write the letters, you have to know who to approach, you have to know how your council functions, how your regional council functions, you need to know your sources of funding and uh, be up with the play really on all of those things. Sport Northern's got a very good reputation with the funding people, uh, so from Foundation North, lotteries, uh, I, I went to Wellington and visited lotteries. Um, we've got a 
Sport North and has a very good rapport with uh, pub charity as well. So it's a case of knowing, you know, knowing your funders, getting introducing yourself, doing, it, doing everything properly and, and being reliable. Within the stakeholders, some of them, rather than putting cash, they'd put in uh, some goods or in, in, certainly in rugby's case, a couple of families have been exceptionally generous with um, their machinery, etc. Um, tens of thousands of dollars worth of donated machinery time, I think. Um, so yeah, that's, that's part of your buy-in, I think. The other really important thing is to have a damn good project manager and we did that. The, what this building that we see behind us is totally different to what the architect um, originally designed. Our project manager just said, well, why are you doing this? And he turned around, sketched some plans, why don't we do this? And we went to contract with a design build rather than an architect doing it. The stakeholders coming together and collaborating was, was always going to be a hard thing to do. Um, in the past, I suppose, you've got sports groups that don't traditionally work together. Here was a reason for them to come together and they had varying levels of commitment from the outset. Given my role as being an elected member and coming from a rugby background, I really had to play um, the nice guy between having the facility and keeping the rugby people appeased and there were a lot of staunch um, believers that uh, the sports hall would come in and overrun them and take them over and felt that it wasn't going to be for them. I just had to always be um, reassuring and provide them with information and so they could uh, grow with me through the experience and learn that it was going to be something here for everybody, including the rugby, and that would enhance the whole facility and sport in general. Some struggles have been getting across our point of what we need as a club. I feel personally that after a lot of robust conversations between us and the committee, there have been a lot of changes with the plans, a lot of to and fro a lot of plan amendments, but overall, they've listened to what we need as a club individually not just with our club but with all the other sporting codes as well and they've managed to put together something that is functional and multi-use for all codes. Something that we didn't do well is that uh, the stakeholders right at the beginning said only consult us when there's something to tell uh, we don't want to meet too often and we took them at their word and I think that was a mistake, that we, we should have communicated a lot more with them. Um, whilst we've, we, we kept them on board, but it would have been more successful if, we'd, uh, if we had consulted, or no, not so much consulted, but if we'd informed more regular newsletters, etc. Opening day, during my speech, there was this constant noise in the background and it was really, really uplifting because it was kids having fun out. They didn't want to listen to me with my opening speech. They were out on the courts having fun. It just made me feel so good. I thought, well, here, this is successful. Seeing the over 60s here with the Petonk Court and the whole broad spectrum of the age, having the ability to utilise the facilities, the extra things that are now being brought in because the facilities here, there's just things that you just wouldn't have anticipated that have happened and now are starting to happen once it's up and running. It's certainly wonderful for our committee meetings and the Petonk group because the Petonk group not only play Petonk but we have a social morning tea every time we play Petonk. Right from the establishment of the board through in 2013 through to construction starting in late 2017. So four years in planning, preparation and accessing the funding and then about a year in terms of construction of the facility which I guess um, you know from go to woe is, is probably not a, not a bad outcome in terms of timing.
There's a booking system where we go through um, our new administrator and we book in our draw for the year. So we lock in our dates that we need and ultimately we have to share. We have to share with sporting codes and negotiate times and time frames and just work in with each other to make it work. There are a lot of different facilities but because we actually pay during the week we don't really see a lot of interaction with other clubs though we have taken part in the community play days and provided patonk opportunities for people that wouldn't normally have those. When we first started building we didn't have funding for the lights but we did make the decision to put in footings for the lights and hope like hell that we could get the funding. If we'd had to do retrospective footings we'd been ripping up some of the courts. Wednesday night was the first one I've had feedback they said there wasn't a shadow on the courts. So the, the place was absolutely chocker from five o'clock till half past nine with netball going and apparently they were just thrilled with the lights. We have to make a surplus to put aside money for maintenance in 10, 15 years time. If we haven't got money in the bank in 15 years time we'll be in trouble. So, so I think that's the biggest thing at the moment is consolidation to, uh, for, for operation and, and get, it, get what we've got now going really, really well. Uh, and then whether it's a half hockey turf or who knows, it could be a more of a social function um, area. A lot will depend on what stakeholders require. So if there was another sports club around New Zealand looking to do the same as what we've managed to achieve today, it would be collaborate. Collaboration is the key, because ultimately without all these different sporting codes, this would never have been able to happen. Work with the committee, um, don't work against them, so try your best to be as open-minded as possible to get um, a positive outcome. Go and talk to people that have done it, um, learn, but, but start the process properly. Start, start with a, you know, make sure that the, your funders are not going to come through unless you've done everything properly from, the, from day one, such as your facility study your feasibility study. If you can't, you have to be able to prove to your funders that there's a need. Get your processes right, get the right people on the board, be, um, the words would be broad-minded, um, be positive and go for it.